like my life changed in a moment. But for some reason, September 9th, 2006, I went to make a tackle, and as soon as I hit him, it seemed as if everything in my body left. Found myself in the emergency room fighting for my life. Guys, we gotta rush him back to emergency surgery. He's about to die. And I'm like, die? Like, what happened? Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. It's yours truly, reporting live again. Mr. Cam Newton, the son, Mr. Boogie, the all. To drop real good content for the masses and the promise to keep it funky for your asses. Today, this person, you may have heard his voice around the airways. He's an author. He's a philanthropist. He's a husband, he's a father, he's a businessman, he's a strong, impactful black man. I present to some and introduce to others, Mr. Inky Johnson. My God, how you doing, man? Man, listen here, bro. Yeah. Man, this this been a this been kind of boiling for some for some years. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. For some years. For sure. And I want you. I want to use this no different than any other platform that you kind of go on just to empower and impact my mantra for myself, you know, the viewer to be better from this. You know what I'm no saying? Doubt. No doubt. Uh, I'm stating the obvious with, with, with your situation that, you, that, that you've had. And the thing that I want to ask more importantly is your mission was to get out the hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you thought it to be one way. How did you pivot and still have the impact, if not more of an impact, in a sense, to give the masses something that who knows if you would have ever been able to do to this magnitude? No question, man. That's a great, great question. But before I get started, man, I want to do something um, that I think is needed and we don't do it enough, man. I'm proud of you, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just as a brother. Yes, sir. As a man. Yes, sir. I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Not only what you've accomplished, but what you have become. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. And I feel like as men, we don't do that enough. But um, like you said, man, growing up in Atlanta, um, young man, born to a mother at 16, goals, dreams, and aspirations to do something with my life, right? I did a lot of firsts in my family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? First to go to college, first to graduate. I did a lot of firsts, and so my future looked promising to a lot of people. The sports route, I felt as if it was the quickest route to help me help my family, mm -hmm. right? Coming up the way I came up, two-bedroom house, 14 people, Kirkwood, zone six to be exact. I remember saying, man, if I make it to the league, to my cousins, we can get our own beds one day. Yeah. Mom working double shift at Wendy's, want to pull her off the double shift, want to give my grandmother better living condition. And I got really close. And I had an injury, September 9th, 2006, playing football at the University of Tennessee, starter at corner. And a lot of people look at that time period in my life, Cam, and they say his football career ended. Right. But it changed my life in more ways than one. Right. The physical appearance, a person can see my arm and see naturally it changed my life. Right. Paralyzed my right arm and hand. You see the atrophy. You could physically see like his life got changed. Right. But it's layered. It not only changed my life in the physical, it changed my life in terms of those I was connected to and just a man I was fortunate enough to become through the adversity and opposition but also I'm still becoming, mm -hmm. right? I always say to people, the great thing about adversity and opposition, when you live with it, like I live with it, you know what I'm saying? Like every single day I encounter something that I can't do that I used to be able to do at one time period or point in my life. And so when you live with it, it teaches you not only about yourself, it teaches you about other people. Mm -hmm. 
And so the fortunate part of it for me was when I didn't make it in terms of the football route, I had to go in search of my gifts, my talents, my abilities, and my purpose. Mm -hmm. I never knew I had what lied on the inside of me in terms of speaking. They put me in public speaking when I got to college. I dropped it on the second day. Mm -hmm. Didn't want anything to do with it, right? And so it, it was almost as if I bumped into it through service, mm -hmm. right? I was just serving Habitat for Humanity. You know how it is, you play ball in college, they take you on the service projects. After I got injured, I just wanted to help people because people did that for me and my family. Cat paid for me to play ball when I was a kid. And so when I would show up, a cat would always say, hey man, what happened to your arm? And I'd be like, oh man, a football injury. Mm -hmm. Another cat would be like, no, what happened though? Yeah. You know, you always got that cat that's gonna press the issue. No, like, what happened? For real. Let's put a microscope. Yeah, together. like what yeah. happened, man? Like it looked different. What yeah. happened? And then I'd go in depth, and before we would leave, somebody would be like, Man, you might need to speak. And I'm like, nah, I'm cool on that. Mm. Like, I don't want to speak. I'll be a coach. Yeah. Right? And so I ran from it for so long, Cam, that when it happened, it was clear cut manifestation that it was being orchestrated by a power and a source that was a lot greater than me. Right. Because I wasn't searching for it or trying to do it. You were running away from it. I was it more. running from it. Yeah. I was trying to do everything but this. Mm -hmm. Right? And it brought me to a space and place in my life to where it made me realize like, hey bro, you ain't got no control of this. Mm -hmm. Right? As much as we think we can control life as people, we want to control different elements of our life. Right? And the things that we do have control over, attitude, focus, energy, what I bring into an environment. But in terms of the totality and the macro of life, like we ain't got no control over that. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to control it, and it brought me to a space and place to where I just had to release and be like, all right, not my will, but thy will. Yeah. Right? And I submitted it, and I became obedient to what I felt I was supposed to be doing with my life, yeah. which led me to where I am now. Man, uh, God, take over. No question. You know what I'm saying? No question. And once you allow that to happen, there's not a man, there's not an intention, mm. there's not a door that won't be open yes, if sir. you just allow God to just be him. No question. You know what I'm man. saying? No question. And, you know, I'm reminded by the quote that says, you can't have fear and faith at the same time. Mm. Yeah, man. That is, just <laughs> one or the other. They don't coincide. You know what no I'm saying? Question. You got to either walk out on faith yeah. or you just going to be walking around in fear mm -hmm. saying, man, I can't lose. Man, I don't want to lose. But right. once you remove all doubt yeah. and say, you know what? Give it to me. No question. However, no question. I'm, I'm, I want to, you know, be encouraged by the fact that Self-made, self-taught, mm. all that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm a byproduct of, of of that type of mentality. But once you started walking into this public speaking realm, yeah, was it books that you read? Was it people that you admired that you tried to emulate? Mm -hmm. uh, how did you even control the tone? Because if you know, you know. Inky Johnson, <laughs> bro, when he just start talking, right. Growing up at Kirkwood, it's on <laughs> six. These water boys that's running around. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, Pama. Hey, come hey, on, no man. Uh, damn, bro. Fuck hey. with me, bit, bro, bit, bro. Yeah. They don't teach you public speaking Absolutely. to be able to enounce every single word. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. So what was that transition for you? How did you do it? And how do you keep staying kind of at the, 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 the top pendulum of mm -hmm. motivating? Because you are an artist. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But more or less, I, I use the analogy, you know, off camera is like, bro, the way you're able to impact people is no different than what Drake or Jay-Z is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But you're, you're also like a David Chappelle, mm. a Kevin Hart, mm. because your material has to change. Absolutely. If you keep telling the same story yeah. of, you know, man, Done. I was this, I was that, what, what happened in, at Tennessee or what, that, that. Done. People are still going to be, they're they going to listen, right. you know what I'm saying? But they're not going to hear it. Absolutely. Or I say that wrong. They're going to hear it, but they're not going to listen to yeah. it for retention. No question. So what was that process like for you to, 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 to put yourself on game to update your software, so to speak? Yeah, man. It's like, um, like you always got to be willing to grow. And like I heard Kobe say something once about editing your life, like ruthlessly, right? And so... 
when I first made the decision to speak, Cam, I, I still remember my first gig, mm. right? When I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. And at this point, I was at the lowest point in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd never been this confused before, had never been this low before, I had moved back to Atlanta in my wife's grandmother's home, trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even get a job at the rec center. Mm. I'm trying to work at Kirkwood Rec, <laughs> create leadership curriculums, Cat tell me. I'm overqualified. Like, this how much I was getting redirected. I'm yeah. like, rec center? Like, the rec qualified is a rec center. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And so a cat invited me to speak in Mississippi. And I went. And at the time, I didn't have a contract. I didn't have nothing. No writer, no nothing. I went. I pull up, backwoods, get there late. And I'm on a bunch of property. And I'm in a spot to where it looked like, I don't know. Right, I started hitting my cousins. I'm texting them like, "Hey, bro, if y'all don't hear from me in a few hours, Man, like, here. it's where I'm at." Drop you know what pin. I'm saying? Like, this is where I'm at. And I go back, man, and it's strobe lights. It's a bunch of kids. I meet this gentleman. He's just doing something for the community. Nice as all get out. I speak. Feels great. Right, my spirit connects with it. My man gives me a little care package. I get back to my wife's grandmother's home. We hours of the morning, wife waited up on me. She said, how did it go, eh? I said, man, it went great. Mm. She was like, what you get? Like, what they give you? Like, me and my wife been rocking since fifth grade, yeah. bro, like, forever. I was like, they gave me this cool coffee mug. <laughs> my wife was like, you sure that's what you supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Like, they ain't give you no check? Yeah. Like, nothing. I was like, nah. I was like, but it felt right. I was like, it felt like mm. this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And she was like, okay, go for it. Right. Let's do it. And so every gig I would get was in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. Bama, South Carolina, Tennessee, you know what I'm saying? Mississippi, all of them is in the Southeast. So what I would do, Cam, I'm a competitor, mm. right? I want to be at the top of my game. When I play ball, I want to know everything. Mm. I watch a receiver. I want to know your stem, right? When you run the post, you run the slant. When you run the deep out, right? I want to know how you connect with your QB. I'm watching everything. Right. Tendencies, everything. So when I started speaking, I ain't trying to be famous. I'm trying to be effective, mm -hmm. right? I want to impact. How can I be effective? I want to be able to go in any room and learn how to communicate and speak. I want variety, right? I want to learn how to switch it up. And so when I'm riding around the Southeast, I'm seeing billboards. If I see an apple, I'm like, ain't give me five minutes on an apple, right? If I see a tennis shoe on a billboard, ain't give me five minutes on that shoe, right? If I see a lawyer, give me five minutes on that lawyer. I see a ball player and give me five minutes on that ball player. And that's how I trained myself, right? And so when I would walk into a room, at first cats thought I was just gonna accept sports gigs, play sports, sports speaker. That's what they wanted to label me as. I'm in, you know, old folks' homes. I'm at a birthday party. I'm at a sporting event. I'm at a corporate event. And cats are like, why are you not just doing sports? I'm like, because if I'm just doing sports, it's not helping me grow and develop. When I walk into an old folks home and the crowd is 60 and up, that content has to be different. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a blind group once in Nashville. The connection has to be different. I go into a sports team, it's different. Go to corporate, it's different. Everybody has different needs, mm -hmm. right? Everybody is gonna challenge me in a different way in terms of my articulation and my connection. When I talk to Aflac, they got different points they want me to hit than the University of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. When I talk to Bama, they got different points they want me to connect on than when I go to the University of Florida. And so everybody has different points that they want me to touch on. And I can't do that if I haven't practiced and prepared from a communicator and an orator standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so driving around the Southeast helped me being quick with it in terms of when I show up and if a person like a Saban or a person like Tennessee's coach say, hey, Inc., last minute, man, this just happened. Can you touch on it? Mm -hmm. Right. Or I go to Penn State, James Frank. Hey, Inc., this just happened today. Can you touch on it? Right. And I incorporate that within my presentation on the spot. And then afterwards, they're like, bro, how you how you do that? Wow. I just told you that. Yeah. But it was those days when I would be riding around the southeast and I was like, ain't give me five minutes on the apple. Right. It's just maximizing. Right. Like I firmly subscribe to the train of thought, Cam, when it says every next level of our life demands a new version of us. Mm. We hear it. Right. Cliche sounds good. But just in terms of the constant quest of self-mastery and growth, like you gotta grow, right? Like I got a paralyzed right arm in hand that I've been living with 
now almost 16 years, mm. right? And when it first happened, I, I could either fold up camp and say, you know what, man? I gave it a good shot. I'm going to go back to Southeast Atlanta. I'm going to sit on the porch with my uncles and my aunts and my cousins. They're going to say, you know what, Ink? You went the furthest. Mm. Like, cool, man. You went the furthest. Come back to the hood. Let's set up. Let's do what we do. And cool. Or I could go over to disability services. I could learn how to write with my left hand mm. and I could finish what I started. Or I could say, all right, man, can I go over here and try some new devices to see what's going to come of it? Right. The blessing for me, Cam, is that I got a brachial plexus avulsion. That's the medical term for it. They gave me two years after my injury initially happened to say if something's going to come back and happen as a result of your injury, it's going to happen within two years. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, great. I said, what's the catch? It was like, the catch is we can't guarantee you nothing. Mm. I was like, what that mean? It was like, we can't guarantee you after the two years, your fingers will work on your right hand. We can't guarantee you after the two years, your arm will work. We can't guarantee you after the two years, you'll have filling in your back. We can't guarantee you any of that. So you just got to show up and see what happens. And so through showing up to see what happens, I can show up, be miserable, complain, or I can show up and figure out ways to grow and extract the good from a situation that's unfortunate, considered by many, or I can show up and condition my mind to train it and look at it and say, you know what, man, this is an incredible blessing. It gives me yeah. time with my father. Mm -hmm. This is an incredible blessing, man. It gives me time with my mother. Mm -hmm. This is an incredible blessing, man. It helps me look back and evaluate things about myself to where I could grow in different areas and aspects. Right. And so it's just conditioning my mind constantly and consistently for ways of growth. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. And I'm so dialed in, bro. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> you it's could, so crazy. Man. You know, and we connected Wi-Fi metaphorically, mm. you know, mm -hmm. but to that person who says, you know what, I do want to stay around the game. Mm -hmm. You know, my brother is a perfect example of that. My older brother, when he can no longer play football no more because of, of skill and nobody wanted to pick him up, he was like, man, I just want to be around the game. I want, I want to be like an agent or something. I want to do this. I want to have some type of impact with the, with the, with the players. And, you know, for you, your impact was saying, I'm going to use public speaking. Right. But take me through the process of that, you know, mm -hmm. where you can't just show up and say, let me gauge the room. Mm -hmm. Let me feel out everybody. Let me at least get some type of innuendos from the coach to say, okay, coach, what you want me to talk about? Leadership. Okay, I got to <laughs> slide with leadership, bop, 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 bop. Yeah. And, and let me go about it. Like, it's not that easy. No. So your your set usually takes, like say for instance, you use AFLAC, right? Mm -hmm. If AFLAC, you know, signs you to come public speak, what was the, the typical time frame for you to, to, to speak? Um, anywhere from 45 minutes to 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anywhere from 45 to 90. Man, that's a long time. Absolutely. <laughs> so for the process, for you to, to be equipped, and it's not like you, you got the luxury to say, all right, right now, yeah. okay, boom, check, uh, second sector to this, I can get talked to other. Yeah. Uh -uh. You have to train your mind to be able to retain all the inventory that you stocked absolutely for this particular message absolutely and heaven forbid we talk about the if factor mm. like what if somebody you know is 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 insubordinate in the, in in, in, oh, in the no crowd question. what if somebody were to just ask a a a disrespectful question, no question. that could hinder your whole or as a whole yeah. Ask it again. I heard what you <laughs> said, but I just want to make sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is the time frame in that 90 minute set mm -hmm. that how many days prior to do you get to uh, prepare for? So I usually do two to three conference calls with whatever group I'm speaking to, whether it be group, team, education, whatever the sector may be. And I start crafting a message from there because what I learned just as a communicator and just as a person, man, preparation is the X factor mm -hmm. in anything we do. You're an athlete. Mm -hmm. The way you prepare makes a difference on game day. It instills a different level of confidence in how you do what you do. Right. Now, you're athletic enough to where you can show up on most days 
and you might still dominate cats just off of strictly God-given athletic ability of Cam Newton, mm -hmm. of one. You'll show up on most days, and if you show up and another cat show up, my man going to have a bad state of affairs yeah. when he got to deal with you just off of God-given ability. Right. But when you prepare and know everything about him, it's a totally different ball game. And so when I show up just in terms of speaking, I'm going to be real, Cam, like early in my career, I knew certain cats was getting paid more than me, right? That wasn't the problem. The problem was they didn't care the way I cared, mm. right? I knew they didn't care about the people and they was getting paid more than me. That was the problem. It wasn't the money, but you're getting paid more than me and I see how you treat the cats in the room and how you view them. Right. I know you don't really care like that. I know it's just strictly a transactional Business. thing yeah. and you just coming in and you doing your thing. I ain't there to knock you, do what you do, right? right? But I view it totally different. Mm -hmm. And so if I really care, like I can't disrespect the craft. Most importantly, the creator put me in this space. Like I got to prepare. So when you go on stage and not go on stage, it's a difference. It's going to hit different. It's a difference, right? Because not only do I take time to prepare, I really care about the cats that I'm speaking. I know it's a possibility that a cat in that room will use my words and go back and tell his son. Mm -hmm. And his son might be like, okay, he said what? Okay, man, I'm going to try that tomorrow. Yeah. Or he might go back and talk to his kids and say, you know what, man? I heard this young cat's story tonight. It really impacted me. I think y'all can use this. Right. Do this. And they might really go out and try it. Mm -hmm. Like a cat will trust my words that much. Right. And so I can never take what I'm doing for granted from a preparation standpoint, because it's real impact on the other side of that. Yeah. And so every time I step in the room, man, it's preparation, it's thought process, and I can never take it for granted, Cam, because I never saw myself doing it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Never saw myself doing it. So, so even with that, it's like that process of, of downloading different things for your set. Mm -hmm. And we did a project together with Open Mic. Dope. And the mic was an acronym for uh, making inspirational content. Yeah, that was dope. And that message that you had was mentality. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it and I go back to thinking about, you know, what was the message there that time and time again, we had take where it was just like, oh my God, oh my God, and then <laughs> I seen the competitive side of you. Okay. Cause you know what, we could have easily said, no, 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 just pick back up from where you are. No, he's like, no, nah, bro, no, 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 no. Ah, yeah. oh, man, I had it, I got it. You wanted to be so meticulous in one take drink. Yeah. One time, I got it. From start to finish, I'm not going, I'm not going to have any hiccups. I'm not going to have any stuttering. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have, unbelievable voice tone mm. and you don't get to that point by not having the drive or the ambition but more importantly the preparation yeah you see what i'm saying no question because a lot of cats may think a lot of people may think oh man it's nothing for me to just start something mm -hmm. and talk about it i'm gonna talk about my life yeah first yeah. round pick yeah you know yeah years in the league that, that's just the top layer yeah and even while I created this this platform, Funky Friday, right? Mm -hmm. It was it was really to open up to the masses to prove to people that I'm way more than what you thought of me to be. Mm. Mm. So I don't want to just Bingo. talk about sports. Bingo. I don't want to just talk about you know Bingo. what spending money is like. I want to talk about the distractions in my life. Bingo. I want to speak on what motivates me. And Bingo. you may not know. I'm a very woke individual to the degree that I have a due diligence that I vow to do right by people who look like me, act like me, yes, think sir. like me, yes, sir. speak like me, yes, sir. dress like me, yes, sir. whatever. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? No so while we're going through our journey, you know, called life, it's all about leaving a, a, a site for people to be able to say, man, Cam did it. I no can question. do it too. Ink did it. No question. I can do it too. No and I'm in a point now where I I embrace it with open arms because there's a newness that I'm walking into. Mm -hmm. You know, person from a natural law, they may think, oh man, can probably just go home, work out, do push-ups, whatever. <laughs> you know, we know he got kids, but whatever. But I'm heavy in meditation. Mm. I'm heavy in, you know, audio books and documentaries 
hearing things every single day. I try to keep the same routine like when I was playing to listen to the YouTube, mm. listening to motivational speaking and that voice tone, the Les Browns, the Inkies, yeah. the, the Eric Thomas, yes, the sir. Zig Ziglar's, you know, TD Jakes, like I sp spoke of yeah. earlier, like, man, you guys have no idea the, the level of impact that you guys have. And I would admonish anybody mm. to really tap into because the brain is a muscle, just like your triceps Absolutely. is a muscle. Absolutely. Just like stamina is an asset in a muscle, right? It's not necessarily a muscle, but you know, you got to work toward it for it to be where you need it to be. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so I come in contact with a lot of, a, a lot of the younger generation by using my platform as seven on seven mm. to give back and talk. And those things is some of the same things that if we all say we want to impact the world, yeah, we can't just only go down to city hall and you know, <laughs> we won't change, yeah. we won't change. But that same bag of chips that you was eating headed to your car, you mm. throw the trash on the floor. Mm. That's not impacting your community. No question. You know what I'm saying? No question. And I'm the type of person to say, okay, hey bro, if you can control you not littering, mm. you can control how you move in your everyday life. Something no as small as that. No question. You know what I'm saying? We all need it. So for you, I know through throughout, throughout this whole transition of the man that you are right now, it wasn't the man that you thought you would be at the age of 12, mm -mm. you know? And how was that psychologically for your sanity when you did go through the injury? Yeah, right. Absolutely. How like I know that there was a dark time. Absolutely. How did you cope with it? I um. I didn't think when my injury first happened, I didn't think it was real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was surreal to me, man, because like I tell people all the time, man, like as people, I feel like we live life and we live with so much assumption that's closely interconnected to arrogance. We feel like we're promised something. A cat will say, hey man, I'll get to that tomorrow. I'm like, who promised you that? i get to that in a month. I'm like, man, who promised you that? Mm -hmm. Right? Like my life changed in a moment. I didn't think it could do that, can? Right. Like you hear about it, mm -hmm. but I didn't think I'd see go out. See the movies. Yeah, you see movies, but you never think it'll happen to right. you. I didn't think I'd go out September 9th, 2006, play in a football game, make a tackle, I had been doing since I was seven and my life would change. Right. I just never thought that. Right. But for some reason, September 9th, 2006, I went to make a tackle, fourth quarter of a game, two minutes left. And as soon as I hit him, it seemed as if everything in my body left. Mm. Found myself in the emergency room fighting for my life. Doctor run into the room. Guys, we got to rush him back to emergency surgery. He's about to die. Mm. And I'm like, die? Like, what happened? Man, like you rupture the subclavian artery in your chest, you're bleeding internally. Got to rush you back right now, take the main vein out of your left leg, plug it into your chest in order to save your life. Said, oh, I guarantee you, you won't be alive in the morning. You'll bleed out. Mm. Like, let's go. Wake up the next morning, six incisions down my left thigh, one across the left side of my neck, one across the right, twice through my right ribs, cut out my right pec, bottom of my armpit to the bottom of my hand. I'm talking about I'm gutted like a fish. Mm. And I can't do the thing that I once thought I would be doing. Life changed. Mm -hmm. Split second. I remember going to sleep, Cam, every day, six, seven o'clock, thinking that, man, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to touch my arm, I'll be able to feel it again. Mm -hmm. Just thinking, like, man, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, touch my arm, I'll be able to feel it. I'll be able to move my hand tomorrow. Talking about for like weeks. Yeah. Going to my room, I'm talking about I'm out early. Cause I ain't gonna wanna. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm finna go to sleep. Yeah. Just thinking tomorrow when I wake up, you in a nightmare. I'm gonna be back in just, business. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I would wake up, every day I would touch it. It's like reality starts setting in deeper and deeper and deeper. And one day, bro, like I read a quote. It says, sometimes you gotta stop living in what you wish or what you thought would have happened, and you just gotta live in what's happening. Yeah. Right. And when I read it, it was like, all right, bro, time to get up, dust yourself off and let's keep it pushing. That was two years. Mm -hmm. 
right? After the injury. After the injury. I tell cats all the time, because cats see me and be like, bro, you handled that. No, bro, I was in a two-year valley. Mm. Talking about fighting, trying to figure it out. I'm working out, thinking I'm coming back. Mm. Got a Dunjoy sling. I'm in a sand pit. I'm backpedaling. I'm running sprints, thinking like, nah, bro, next year I'll be good. Yeah. And at the end of the two years, I'll never forget, I'm in Rochester, Minnesota. Doctor had a new device, arm skateboard. He like, Ink, we gonna strap you up to this, and we think this gonna give us something back. And so I'm in the room, I'm hype. I'm at the Mayo Clinic, best physicians in the world, and we try the device, and my man just walk off. And I remember he walked off, I jogged over to him, and I've been working with him for two years, so I know him. Yeah. I jog over to him, I grab his shoulder, I slowly turned my man around, my man was bawling. And he was crying, bro, and he was like, Ink, I'm sorry, man. He was like, we wanted to work. He was like, but we not seeing anything. Mm. It's like your arm and your hand probably never work another day for the rest of your life. And he was just like, I'm sorry. And I was like, it's all good, man, I appreciate you, right? But in that moment, Cam, several things had happened that was incredible in my life. My mother despised my father my whole life because she had me at 16 and my father wasn't present the early years of my life. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even too tough be in the same room together, right? Because it would be conflict. Mm -hmm. When my injury happened, they had to be in the same room, right? They had to go to visits together. It created a level of camaraderie, a level bond. of dialogue, a bond that wasn't present. My father took a month off work in Atlanta Ink, I'm gonna come and stay with you, I'm gonna help you. Our bond increased. I saw a side of my man that I never saw in my life. You know what I'm saying? What it did for us, what it did for me and my roommates. Shout out to Rod Mayo, Robert Ayers, Ramon Foster, Sinclair Cannon. Them boys went in my closet, tied my shoes, took me where I needed to go, got plastic bags from the store, cut them out because I had so many incisions on my body that I couldn't get wet. Mm. So they would have to cut plastic bags when I would get in the shower to help me put them joints over my body because I couldn't get them wet, yeah. right? The bonds that it created, right? What it did for me spiritually, what it did for my family. Like it changed my life, mm -hmm. right? And when I say my life, I'm talking about the people that's connected to me. Right. Because for most of us, Cam, when we see adversity, opposition, or challenge, if Cam Newton went through something traumatic, average cat gonna come up to you, uh, bro, like, how did it impact you, mm -hmm. right? What did you have to sacrifice? What did you lose? Pandemic, right? Most people go to people real time, real adversity, real opposition. I'm in St. Louis. I say, man, can somebody tell me the silver lining that you've got as a result of the pandemic? Mm. Lady stands up and says, I'm thankful I get to speak to my mother every single day. She's in Japan. Prior to, I never got the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Cat stands up in the back of the room a man looked like he's supposed to have been in 300, the movie. <laughs> I'm talking about, I'm talking about cut up, right? My man start crying and say, I'm thankful I got to watch my first child being born. Mm. He said, I knew for a fact, man, if I was working the same schedule, I never would have got the opportunity to witness that moment. He said, what's something you thankful for, Ink? I said, man, I'm thankful for 3 p.m. He said, why 3 p.m.? I said, most days at 3 p.m., I get to pick my kids up from the carpool line. He was like, the carpool line? I was like, no doubt. He's like, really the carpool line? I said, really, but not really. He said, what you mean by that? I said, can I condition my mind in the midst of uncertainty, adversity, or opposition to see good? Mm -hmm. So it's not the carpool line. It's finding good in the midst of opposition, turmoil. adversity, turmoil, and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And so for me, this just been one big test, bro. Mm -hmm of me cultivating my mentality, my character, and who I am as a man to see, can I find good in the midst of that verse in the opposition? King's quote says it. You judge the true character and caliber of a man not by where he stands in times of comfort and convenience. Mm -hmm. You judge the true character and caliber of a man by where he stands in times of challenge mm -hmm. and controversy. And so the question remains, and I ask people all the time, man, who are you when it goes south, man? Not when you get what you want. Mm -hmm. We know when the sun's shining and you get what you want, you're going to smile. Right. Babies do that. I give them a bottle, they're going to smile. Mm -hmm. I give them what they want, they're going to smile. I give a puppy a snack, he's going to smile. But when you don't get what you want, when it doesn't go the way you want it to, even if it affects and impacts you on a physical level, mm -hmm. 
who are you? Right. Right? Because that's the person that your kids are going to learn from. That's the person that your parents raise. Mm -hmm. That's the person that will go out and either positively or negatively affect and impact the world. Who are you? Right? Yeah. And so for me, that's what it is. So you got, you got this platform that you're creating right now for sports and psychological enrichment. Mm -hmm. And I think that is important because just like, you know, who you are and you was running away from something, I don't think a lot of people really give the attention to certain situations the attention it needs to highlight it. Not to dwell on it, right? But to admit, man, that hurt me. No question. That th th those life experiences, not having a father around, not having a real loving relationship with my mom, impacted me. Mm -hmm. So once you give that power, or you being disappointed to the notion that, man, I wanted to play football, yeah, it didn't happen. Okay, okay I acknowledge that, and I'm moving forward. Tell me about this platform that you're doing. So when you think about athletes can all are equally challenging but if you thought about time periods as an athlete right in terms of challenge mm -hmm. when a cat is coming out of college and maybe getting blessed to go to the league whether it be nfl mlb nba whatever hockey, whatever the case may be when a cat is maybe in the league doing well right. got his challenges or when it's time for a cat to transition and put the sport down mm -hmm. and be like, all right, I got to find a different avenue. All are equally challenging, but if you had to pick a time period, cat leaving college, going into the league, cat in the midst of the league, or cat putting the sport down and having to transition back out into everyday life, which time period if the you looked one. at it? The last one, the last right? One. Yes, sir. For sure. Transitioning into something that you've been doing all your life. Mm -hmm. I've been playing a game of football for as long as since I was seven years old. Yeah. And I had a conversation with a, with, with a group of people earlier saying, everything has always been done for me, mm. right? Yeah. Even uh, enrolling in college, that was different. Somebody did that for me. I had, you know, counselors or whatever say, hey, you don't need to go to the bookstore to get your books. We already got your books right here. No doubt. You got agents to say, don't worry about talking and negotiating your contract. I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to represent you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You know, buying a home, absolutely. Lear learning how to write a check. Yeah, you know insert yourself yeah, back yeah. into your family like uh, every single day. Uh, All that. Of course, being yeah. around your family <laughs> yeah. as long as you are, because yeah, usually absolutely. it's just the off season that you do get to appreciate. Oh man, I love taking my, you know, my son to school. Da 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 da. da. But all, all of a sudden. It used to only be for about two to three months. Now it's every single day. Yeah. So different. that joy that you'd be like, oh, yeah. man, come on, Junior, <laughs> let's go to school. But you looking at you dish your lifestyle for four or five months. Yeah. It's yeah. heavy. Yeah, man. And, and I feel like our brothers and sisters struggle mm -hmm. mightily with that period, right? That transition period is like make or break, right? Even if a cat that made and done well financially. It's still a make or break time period because there's so much, I feel like anxiety, uncertainty around what's next. Will they love me the same? Will they treat me the same? Right now I gotta figure things out. Now I gotta do stuff on my own. And so when it comes to just psychological education, the mental side of understanding the sport and what it created while we played it, right? I think one of the upsides for me was when I say to people, my arm and my hand got paralyzed, my heart did, mm. my dedication did, mm. my work ethic did, my ethos, my essence did, like what makes me ink and who I am, that never got penetrated. Yeah. But I was very aware of that, right? Early on, I was aware of, man, if I entrench myself into this process every single day, one day when I hang the cleats up, I'm gonna take these things, extract them, and try to apply them in the other areas and aspects of my life to make me somewhat of a decent human being, right. to give me a shot. Somewhere along the lines, it's like our brothers and sisters forget that. Right. They forget like, nah, bro, you great. Yeah. Without that, you Without phenomenal. It. Without it. Like you phenomenal, man. You ain't got to fall into the identity crisis of, oh man, I ain't playing ball where they love me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They'll still love you. But figuring out how do we extract these things that we've cultivated since we were seven and applying them in the other areas and aspects of our lives 
to make us decent human beings, Correct. right? And so focusing on the psychological aspect of that, but also understanding that everybody is not going to make it to that pinnacle. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to make it to that lead. Like you travel with young cats all the time. Seven on seven, you helping shape, mold, mindset, spirit, development, ball. Beautiful, mm -hmm. phenomenal. And I see this and I'm like, man, that's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like cats did stuff like that with me. And so the thing that I always think about, even when I see a Cam Newton traveling, cultivating, shaping these young minds and helping these young cats, what's some of the challenges on the other side of that? For me, it, it, specifically for my, the, the younger generation that I come in contact with on a regular, the issue is they grow so numb to seeing me so much, but forgetting about the accomplishments, mm. but forgetting about who I really am. Mm -hmm. Because it always starts, oh my God, man, I'm, I'm playing for Cam Newton's, for yeah. Cam Newton team. Yeah. And then you see me as, oh man, that's Cam Newton. Yeah. And then we travel in so many different places and you see how people react when they see me Oh man, let me get a picture. Oh man, let me get an autograph. Yeah. Oh man, bro, this Cam. No doubt. And if, you know, as a 16, 17 year old kid, seeing that, initially you'd be like, bro, that's heavy, that's yeah. tough. But then after the third or fourth tournament, you forget. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to you, you say, bro, that crowd that you're hanging out with, bro, mm -hmm. trust me, I went through it. Mm. I went through that fire mm. with, 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 with leechers yeah. that I thought was my partner. Yeah. And they forget like, bro, I'm rich as fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't need to be right. doing this. Like, hey, let's keep it above. Hey, look, num hey, look, I thought about this. Like, bro, you was the number one pick. Yeah. Not 11, not uh, 21, no, like no, one. No. Like one, one of one. one, like one. You that's why every time I see y'all be like, what up, one, you know like that's one. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of kids and even parents or even coaches for that particular matter, when you yeah. give it back or you render your services as a servant, because I am a servant. No question, no question. They forget yeah. who you are, yeah. what you've accomplished and what you have. Mm. And don't get it missed understood the fact of my servant ability mm -hmm. to be able to cope with you on so many other different ways mm. as a parent, as a father, as a coach. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, young man, at 16, who's a five-star athlete that can go to any school that he decides to go to, I've been there, bro. You're not talking you. to no sucker that ain't live what I'm preaching. Did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And once they understand that and they say, oh man, coach, Man, I'm seeing little baby. I'm seeing future. Man, they just bought this though. I seen them on Instagram and they flying private. They, yeah. I'm like, bro, I do that too. Yeah. But I don't post it. I don't need to post it. I, it's not even the it's not even a matter of saying what they do, little baby, future, or any other rapper is bad. That's their lifestyle. No question. My lifestyle renders me certain things, but I attack it in a different type of way. Absolutely. I don't want to show that, nor do I need to show me with a whole slide of money talking about, you know what I'm saying, doing a different challenge, the million dollar challenge. That's not that's not my, my aesthetic. Right. You know, but when you go and talk to them on their level and say, hey, bro, everything that you want can be attained if you commit. Mm. Yeah. And I always use the analogy of the pig and the chicken. Hmm. Talk right? to me. So talk the chicken, he didn't commit. Yeah. That's just a, a natural reproduction of laying the egg. Mm. Every time a person eats breakfast, mm. one committed, one just naturally just did what they did. Yeah. That pig yeah. committed his life, her life, mm. in order for you to eat bacon. Mm. They don't naturally reproduce something that gives you that bacon. Somebody had to die. Mm. Yeah. That pig committed. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So once you right. start speaking that tone to the kids and letting them know like, hey, bro, Everything that you want, mm -hmm. everything that you dream of, I have it. Yeah. And I'm not telling you that in, 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 in a boastful manner. I'm telling you that because I want you to lean on me for guidance. Absolutely. A trusted source that wants nothing from you, Absolutely. nor needs anything from you. If I wanted to use my platform in a monetarily way, I would have I started an agency. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? No and question. have it as a pipeline and say, hey, I'm doing all this for y'all, taking care of y'all, y'all parents or whatever. Y'all traveling for free, da, da, da. I just want it on the back end. Yeah. When you sign so that contract, do it. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. No question. A lot of people don't even know the, 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 the talent that I've touched that came throughout my program. And it still will remain anonymous. No question. Because that's not, I don't, I don't do it in a disingenuous way to, to, to get something in return. Mm. My reciprocated, you know, type of feel comes when I see somebody living up to their full potential. Absolutely. Because I would not be the person who I am without somebody pouring into me, whether yeah. that's my father, whether that was my coach, whether that was my teacher, whether that was uh, a counselor or whatever. And I'm no different. So when I when I'm around the kids all the time, they they see it, yeah. but they don't understand it. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying. And I think it's needed for them to see, like, man, Cam got a Ferrari. Yeah, Cam got a Lamb. Yeah, Cam got a Rose. Yeah, Cam got it this. Cam got it that. Yeah, but their negligence mm. don't even understand how much all those things cost. Mm. Mm. And the person who's portraying that may not always have that to have, like Absolutely. can afford that. Yeah. And I've always told myself, I said, I'd rather be broke for the rest of my life mm. and never see money and waste it. Mm. Or I say that wrong. I'd rather be broke for the rest of my life and not able to see money rather than to have money and waste it. Yeah, man. A lot Absolutely. of people have certain things that they can afford. Mm -hmm. My theory is this, I'd rather not have something that I can afford mm -hmm. rather than to have something that I cannot afford. Absolutely. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? And once you understand that, it's not about private jets. Right. Those are, you know, cool things to have. It's not about, you know, living the luxury of the lavish lifestyle. You know, those things are cool. But if I can't do it every single day, mm. that ain't P. That yeah. ain't cool. No question. No you know question. What I'm saying? And understanding what it takes to even be in a position. Mm. Like Saban said something, bro, that was so heavy, cats missed it. It's like what you're talking about, right? A lot of young cats, the same way they'll take for granted being able to have access to a Cam Newton every single day, they'll take their mother for granted. Mm. That work two jobs to put them in a certain position Correct. to play a sport. They'll take their father for granted. They'll take a coach, sacrifice, pick them up, drive them here, do that, get to a certain position cat getting caught, whatever the case may be. And so attacking these different areas and aspects, and they'll disrespect the blessing, yeah. the gift. So Saban said something once, he said, um, it's almost as if cats lose respect for winning, mm. right? It's not the win. You want to win. Everybody want to win. You lose respect for what it takes to the win. Process. The process, dedication, commitment, work ethic, sacrifice, that's what you lose respect for, mm -hmm. what it takes to win, right? You disrespect the blessing. You don't just disrespect the blessing. You disrespect what it takes in order to be blessed, Correct. right? Respecting the people that come into your life and say, hey, young blood, I don't want nothing from you, man. Mm -hmm. I just want you to pick up what I'm putting down. I'm right. just trying to help you, bro, right? You lose respect for that because somewhere along the way, you, don't, you no longer value it. Right. And so with me trying to create this platform, it's about how can I attack these different areas and aspects to let cats know that, hey, man, sports is just a vehicle. I got two kids, 10-year-old mm -hmm. son, 11-year-old daughter, both play sports, mm -hmm. pretty decent at it. Cat came up to me one day and he was like, man, your son, real good in baseball. I know you wanted to make it to the league, right? I was like, what make you think that? Because mm -hmm. I just see how hard y'all work. I was like, well, we're going to work. I don't care if he was trying to be an artist. Yeah. We're going to work in anything. Yeah. Like, that's just... That's the prerequisite. Mm -hmm. I said, but no, it ain't about that. I said, bro, I lost it in a moment. Mm -hmm. So if anybody knows how shallow right. something is, it's me. Right. But what saved me was I didn't lose respect for the process. I didn't lose respect for the blessing. Right. I showed up and I worked my tail off every single day. And so when tragedy hit, when opposition hit, when adversity hit, I was like, man, I ain't like the way that felt. But, bro, pick yourself up, Let's dust go. yourself off. Let's keep moving forward. And so what I'm trying to build in my children and the young cats that I have access to is, hey, bro, you're going to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. Life hit everybody. Everybody. I promise you. Life going to hit you with some combos. You're going to be like, boy, I ain't think I get hit with that one. Yeah. Right? You're going to get hit with it. Mm -hmm. 
But once you get hit with it, do you have the stand power and the stamina to absorb it and pick yourself up and remember all the things that the people did for you when they didn't have to? Yes, sir. When I was in the hospital, I remember my mother working a double shift. I remember when my mom couldn't pay for me to play sports and she put me around cats that could pay for me. Mm -hmm. I remember when we got robbed on Christmas Eve and my coach showed up with a brown paper bag that he got from the corner store and said, Ink, I'm sorry, I got the call late. This was all I can do. And had drawers and socks in the bag. Mm -hmm. And my man been buying me drawers and socks until this day on Christmas and I don't even need them. Yeah. I remember when my uncle would put me in a truck and drive me across town and be playing UGK and giving me life lessons. Yeah. I remember all that when I was in the hospital. I remember me and my cousin going light pole to light pole. I remember my eighth grade teacher coming into class telling me, hey boy, you gonna marry that girl one day. And it was my wife. Mm. And when he walked my wife down the aisle at our wedding, he winked at me and said, Ink, I told you I so. Told you. Right? I remembered all those moments. And so when adversity and opposition hit, it was like, bro, pick up the pieces and keep it pushing. Right. Because the only thing they wanted from me, Cam, they didn't care about the league. Only thing they wanted from me was, Bro, I just want you to finish what you start, and I just want you to be a good person. So to that point, man, everything with, that you were saying was big gems, Eliantes, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> VVs for the soul. And to piggyback off that, people have to be reminded that they're the biggest joy and the blessing. The joy is in the journey. No question. No question. Not the final destination. No question. No question. The joy is that I, I remember me going through what I was going through. And there came a point where it was like, OK, we won an SEC championship. I got to win a national championship. Yeah. OK, I won a Heisman. I got to be the first pick. OK, I got all pro, but I need an MVP. Mm. I need a Pro Bowl. Yeah. And collecting all these different accolades. But the thing that I always reminded myself was, Getting to that point, mm -hmm. the sacrifices that I was making, the regiment that I was on. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take those life lessons of understanding your routine to get to that point, yeah. you'll be a fool. No question. You know what I'm saying? That's it, man. That's it. Like, you remember me and you was talking that day, and I read that quote card, and it said, maybe the journey isn't so much about becoming anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's about unbecoming all the things that's not us so we can become the people that we're really destined to Correct. become. Correct. That's what you just spoke to, bro. Yes, sir. It's about unbecoming, mm. right? Because at every level and every phase, when you won SEC championship, when you won national championship, when you won MVP, when you won all pro, first pick, all of those was a different Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. Like the essence of you was Cam. Right. But you had to grow into something different in order to make those things happen. Right. You couldn't be the same Cam when you won the SEC championship yeah. than when you was the MVP. Yes, sir. It wasn't possible. It wouldn't have happened. Like, I couldn't be the same ink that when I encountered the injury and when I got on the other side of it, right. it was impossible. Right? It would have crushed me. Mm -hmm. I had to grow into a different individual and had to become a different individual. And so when you talk about the journey, that's all we got at the end of the day. Yes, when the clock stops, when it's all said and done, when we wrap it up, when we fold tent, all you got is your journey and your experiences. Mm -hmm. That's where the true value is, yes. right? That we can point to, that we can learn from, and that we can say, hey, man, I went through this, young blood. Let me pass this along to all you, right? right? This happened, man. Let me show you how I got there. Hey, man, I encountered this. Let me show you how I got through it. Mm -hmm. That's the true value, right? It says it. We're overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. That's why when Cam shares his story in a room, a cat will get goosebumps. Yeah. That's why when Ink walk in the room and share his story, a cat will get goosebumps. Anybody share their story, cat will get goosebumps. Because in some area and aspect of that story, Cam going to say, I can identify with that. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. Ink going to say, bro, I can relate to that part of it. That's true value. Yes, sir. That's what we got, Cam. Mm -hmm. Right? That's all we got. Yeah. Hey, man, appreciate you, my brother. No question. And man. as we always end things on yeah. this one of a kind episode of Funky Friday, we're going to use that camera, mm. finishing with this camera. Yeah. And we're going to say one finger. Yeah. One pinky. Yeah. One thumb. Yeah. One love, baby. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, ain't. One time for the one time. Yeah.
Appreciate you, brother. Man, I appreciate you, bro. All love, man.